Okay, so welcome to the next lecture. So in this lecture, we shall introduce the class of uh, we shall introduce the notion of metric spaces. So metric spaces provides perhaps the most important uh, class of topological spaces. Uh, so and so after we introduce metric spaces, we will also see. Uh, I mean, we have talked about open subsets, closed subsets, continuous maps. We will see. We will give descriptions of these in terms of met in terms of the metric. Okay, so okay, so let us begin by recalling the definition of a metric space. So we recall the definition. of a metric space. Uh, so definition. Now let x be a set and let d from x cross x to the real numbers which are greater than or equal to 0 be a function, be a map which satisfies uh, the following three conditions d of x comma y is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to y. d of x comma y is equal to d of y comma x and d of x comma z is less than equal to d of x comma y plus d of y comma z uh, for all x comma y comma z in x right this is for all x comma y in x okay so this is called the triangle inequality So the d is the d is for distance, yeah, and we know that if we have a triangle, right? So this is x, uh, this is z, and this is y. Then the distance between x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y and y and z, yeah. So if these three properties are satisfied, uh, then yeah. So then we say that. Then the pair, the pair x comma d is called a metric space. Right, and uh, the map d is called the metric on x or the distance function. So we just need any function d which satisfies uh, these three conditions, right? So given any set x, there could be uh, lots of metrics on x. Okay, but the most common example of a metric space we encounter of a metric space we encounter. is Rn with the Euclidean metric, right? So that is, uh, if we have two vectors in Rn, right? So x is x1 up to xn. And similarly, y is y1 up to yn, right? So then d of x comma y is defined to be the square root of the sum of squares of the difference of x i and y i. 
Okay, so let us check that this defines a metric. So let us check. that this defines a metric right so uh, note that the first two conditions are the first two conditions are trivial to check right the only non trivial condition is the triangle inequality so which we'll prove now here yeah? uh, so proposition So, this d of x comma y, we shall write this as norm of x minus y, the two norm. Yeah. So we will use this notation instead of writing d of x comma y. Okay. So what we need to prove is that with this in this notation, that the norm of x minus y uh, is less than equal to. Or alternatively, I mean, we can say we can define uh, we can define. Uh, okay, let me just uh, so if we if for a vector x in R n in R n we define the two norm of x as summation x i square and square root of this yeah so then clearly so then i don't need to write this as a definition so then clearly d of x comma y is equal to the two norm of x minus y right and to check that this defines a metric to check that this defines a metric we need the following proposition. It is precisely the following proposition. Mm. The norm of x minus y is less than equal to for all z in r n. right so let us prove this uh, so it is enough to check that and this left us an easy exercise that it's enough to check this for all right so in order to do this uh, so consider the map right this inner product defined as x i y i okay so we first claim that this absolute value of this quantity is less than equal to into norm by 2. So, let us first prove this claim and uh, to see this, so let us write, let us define w to be equal to y minus t x, where t is a real number. right? And now, let us compute so, this in a product of W with W, right, and this 
is equal to uh, this is bilinear right this is bilinear in both so what that means is if we fix x that is fix if we fix x then x comma lambda y 1 plus y 2 is equal to or if you fix x then it is linear in y right and similarly if you fix y then linear in x. So, using the bilinearity we get that this is equal to minus 2 t into x comma y right and it is also symmetric bilinear and plus symmetric right because clearly uh, for symmetry x comma y is clearly equal to y comma x. So, using the fact that this is bilinear and symmetric we get this, but this is precisely equal to uh, t square yeah, minus 2 t. Yeah. Uh, so, for a fixed x and y, we view this as a quadratic in t right. Uh, there is a degree 2 polynomial in t and as this and as it only takes positive value greater values greater than equal to 0 it follows that the discriminant is less than equal to 0. follows that the discriminant is less than equal to 0 right. But what is a discriminant? So, the discriminant is uh, 4 square is less than equal to 4 into which proves our claim right. right. This is the claim which we want to prove right. This is the claim which we want. So, using this claim we will now prove the proposition. So, uh, note that So, we have uh, norm x minus y whole square is equal to uh, this is equal to this is less than equal to yeah so over here we have used the claim uh, so oh sorry we have not used the claim yet uh, this is less we are just taking absolute value uh, this is less than equal to Now, here we have used the claim uh, 
whole square, right? So this implies that. And uh, note that the norm uh, of y is same as norm of minus y. So therefore, we can just replace y by minus y and we get okay. Uh, so thus, so this shows that this R n comma d is a metric space. So this proves triangle inequality holds, and therefore this is a metric space. Okay. Uh, so this is the main example of metric space. Okay. So now, given a metric space, how can we use the metric to define a topology on it? So let us see that. So given a metric space X, we can use the metric. on x. Yeah. So, for that, for x and x and an epsilon positive, define the open ball of radius Epsilon around x as follows. Okay, so b epsilon x is defined to be those y in x says that the distance of x from y is strictly less than epsilon. Okay, and uh, we consider the collection. There is something which we are familiar with. B contained in the power set of x defined as so B is the collection of all these open balls around various points of x. X is in x and epsilon is positive. Okay. So it is easily checked that. So it is easily checked that B satisfies the two conditions for being a basis. Right. So thus, B defines a topology tau on x which has b as basis. Right? And so therefore, in other words, so uh, thus a subset u containing x is open in this topology if and only if uh, it satisfies the problem following property property for every u in x Oh, sorry, sorry, for every x in u, there exists an epsilon positive such that this open ball of radius epsilon around x is completely contained inside u. So, this is very uh, similar to the examples that we saw in the beginning of the course, that is Rn. So, yeah, so if we have our topological space x over here, so 
a set is open if and only if given any point x, we can find a ball of radius epsilon around x which is completely contained inside you. Yeah. So, the epsilon of course, depends on x. Yeah. Uh, so, it is trivial to check and this is left as an exercise. that the topology defined on R, R n using the Euclidean metric is the standard topology. Okay, and this this check is left as an exercise. Okay, so now uh, we want to understand what it means to be in the closure in terms in a metric space. Yeah, so in terms of the metric. So definition. Mm, let X be a metric space. and let x n for n greater than equal to 1 be a collection of points of x of points of x. Okay. So, we say x n converges to x if for every epsilon positive there is an n uh, sufficiently large such that for all let us say n naught and this n naught depends on epsilon depends on epsilon such that for all n greater than equal to n naught, the x n's are contained in the epsilon ball around x. Okay. Uh, so, this x n, so I should write x n converges to, we say x n converges to x. Right, and it's often written as x n converges to x. Okay, so roughly, uh, if we have x and x is here, and we have a sequence of x n's, so we want these this entire the sequence to get closer and closer to x as our n tends to infinity. Right, so or precisely what we want is, yeah, no matter which no matter how small we take epsilon, when we take the epsilon ball around x, uh, after finitely many n's, all the x n should be in that epsilon ball. Okay, so, let us prove this lemma. Uh, let x be a metric space. Right. And let a contain in x be a subset. Then x is in A closure if and only if there is a sequence x n converging to x and x n belongs to A. So, x is in the closure of A if and only if there is a sequence in A which converges to x. Right. So, let us take a simple example. So, if we take let us say this region right. So, then given any point on the boundary given any point on the boundary we can find a sequence inside 
this red region, this region x square plus y square is strictly less than 1, right, which converges to this point in the boundary. Yeah. But uh, if we take some point outside uh, this boundary, then we would not be able to find a sequence. Yeah. So, yeah. then we can find a small neighborhood around this point outside, which does not meet this set A. Yeah. So, therefore, we won't, no matter which sequence we take inside A, uh, yeah, it will not satisfy the definition of converging to x. If we take a point outside uh, this circle x square plus y square is equal to 1. Yeah. So, that is a, that's a small example of what is happening. So, let us see a proof. Uh, so, let us assume that suppose x belongs to a closure, right. So, let us say x is over here, right. So, then uh, by the definition of closure, every uh, open subset u containing x meets Right. So, take u to be b 1 upon n x. So, we take u n to be this collection right? and we choose. So, each u n it meets a because uh, x is in the closure. Right. Mm, so, choose any x n in b 1 upon n this epsilon this 1 upon n neighborhood of x. So, we, we are taking this, we are taking smaller and smaller neighborhoods, right. And inside each neighborhood, we are choosing each of these neighborhoods, it meets this red region and we choose one point in that intersection A, yeah. Uh, so, then we claim that. x n converge to x, right. So, to prove this, what do we need to show? So, we need to show that given any epsilon positive, there exists some n naught very large. So, that such that for n greater than equal to n naught, we have x n belongs to b epsilon x, right. So, let us show this. Uh, so, note that first choose. So, we can choose n naught sufficiently large. So, that uh, 1 upon n naught is strictly less than epsilon, right. So, then uh, we claim that not we have uh, b 1 upon n x is obviously contained in b 1 upon n not x which is contained in b epsilon x right and uh, moreover this uh, these balls these are nested and so on right so from this uh, and x n is here, x n plus 1 is here and so on, right. So, the, all this is contained in B 1. Right. So, therefore, this shows that. So, this implies for all n greater than or equal to n naught, x n belongs to b epsilon x, uh, which implies that x n converges to x. Okay. So, conversely, suppose, so in the first part of the proof, we showed that if x is in a closure, then we can find a sequence of x n's in a. So, that uh, 
x n is converged to x yeah so and conversely so suppose x n is a sequence in a such that x n is converged to x then we need to show that x is in a closure right so once again we will use a definition so let u containing x be an open subset right so by the definition of the topology on x which is given by the metric right so then there exists an epsilon positive such that b epsilon x is completely contained inside u so u is some set open set which contains and let's say x is here so we can find an epsilon so that b epsilon x is completely contained inside u right and uh, so as x n converge to x so this implies that for all n greater there exists n naught such that for all n greater than equal to n naught x n belong to b epsilon x right uh, so this implies that x n belongs to b epsilon x intersected a which is contained in u intersection a right so thus u intersection a is non empty right so thus x belongs to a closure okay so uh, we have given a nice so in case of metric spaces we have given a nice and intuitive criterion for uh, what it means for a point to be in the closure of a set right so right so once again we return to our earlier example so the closure of this set we are taking this open region a is equal to x square plus y square strictly less than 1 right so the closure of this is exactly the set a a closure is equal to x square plus y square is less than equal to 1 okay so we will end this lecture here